Hi, my name is Norman Edgar. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary. Today is uh, November the 17th, in 2014. I'm in St. Charles, Missouri, in the United States, and it is snowing outside. It is 22 degrees Fahrenheit today, uh, really early winter. I wanted to uh, I wanted to share some things that have uh, been made real to me in my life as a, as a Christian missionary. I've been at this work since 1974 and I've seen uh, many, many things. And uh, I just want to touch on a couple of them today with you. I guess the the surprising truth about religion, about God, and about Jesus is that how many people are clueless about how to become a Christian? They're absolutely clueless. I cannot tell you how many people on in the United States and Asia that I've talked with as a missionary asking this simple question what is salvation? What does atonement mean? What's repentance? What does it mean to be a Christian? What Bible do you think is right? I just ask simple, simple questions and I'm telling you most people 95% of people are clueless as to the way of salvation, of becoming a Christian. Those that have some sort of religious experience in their life can only repeat what they've heard someone else say to them. They are clueless of how to become a Christian. And I know that <laughs> that word clueless is a uh, is a hard word, but I'm telling you, I've talked to Buddhists, Hindus, they're clueless. Catholics, absolutely clueless of how to become a Christian. We've got Baptists and Pentecostals and Methodists, Episcopalian, Presbyterians, Lutherans. You talk with them, and they can only repeat just bits and pieces of what they remember from their religious training in some denominational church. And today, for the most part, being a Christian means go build somebody a house or give them some canned goods or a clothes or take care of their pet or something or do some good work for the community. And for the most part, that that's they remain clueless. As a missionary, I can tell you, Selma and I, my wife Selma, we we don't have a lot of friends. On one hand, we could have many, many friends if we wanted that type of friendship. The only thing that the people I come across with they they all have this idea and they tell me at times norm you're a good guy they'll say to me but you know enough about this jesus and salvation it's really sad and it's really discouraging at times too i can tell you i can't tell you how many times i'd like to walk away from this I've been on Facebook for several years and Facebook you can see what people are thinking about. And for the most part the people that that I see on Facebook including my friends that I, I have acquaintances with, they only present one side of their life. And they think that that's cool I guess what they're interested in, what they're doing, drinking, partying, 
whatever it is that they like, they put on Facebook. And I fail to read the way of salvation. I have multitudes of people daily that want to friend me in Facebook. And I look at their uh, bios or biographies on Facebook and 99% of them don't have a thing about nothing on there. I'm clueless as to who they are and what they believe. I don't friend somebody just to be friending so I can have a lot of friends on my Facebook page. It's the same way with YouTube. Becoming a Christian is not something that you or I can do. We can't do it. There's a part that has to be there that most people reject, and that is God's grace. Grace comes to us in many mysterious different ways. Grace is God's power and strength and love that comes to us. It doesn't come to us to help us with a problem, uh, how to solve a problem, marriage problem, children problem, drug problem, alcohol problem, whatever the problem is in life, bankruptcy, whatever businesses, church problem, it's not for that. God's grace, the initial God's grace that comes, His Holy Spirit power comes into your life for one reason, to align you up to begin entrance and walking down that narrow straight road to salvation through Jesus Christ. It's not to join a church. I, I, you will be surprised. I listen and see people. They'll take their little child or little baby and dedicate it to the Lord and think, well, that, the child is saved, is born again. Take a child that has no reasoning ability of what they're really doing and what it's about, but they repeat something because they're adults tell them this, to repeat it. And then if you ask the child, well, you love Santa Claus? They say, sure, I love Santa Claus. You want to be a Christian? Yes, I want to be a Christian. Well, you know there's no reasoning there yet. God has a plan for everyone. And there's only one way of salvation, and that's the gospel message. Christianity has become something totally different. Again, I cannot tell you how many times we've been in the Christian, Protestant churches, and it is a farce. They're no more interested in going out on the street and helping people, leading them to Jesus Christ and a man in the moon. They're interested in their little group, in their youth group, and in their uh, bake sales or their clothing drives or whatever to enrich, to make their congregation bigger so they can build a bigger thing, whatever that bigger thing is. And that's how they think the, the church is all about. God's grace is that grace that leads you to that place where you begin. That you know you're not in a right relationship with God. It begins there. And it only lasts for a period. Maybe for a week or two weeks or a month maybe. And if you, if you don't act on that grace, it, it just fades away. And all of a sudden, you find yourself right back doing the same things as before. Not thinking about God, not thinking about Jesus Christ, your family, your job, your friends, your uh, whatever it is, hunting, fishing, going shopping, with going out with your friends. Good, decent, moral things. I'm not talking about immoral things. But it's a good, decent, moral people that are going to go to hell. Why? They refuse that grace. 
They refused to listen to that small, still voice that saying, Hey, I want you to look at this about Jesus Christ. I want you to read something here in this Bible, in this New Testament. I want you to see. I want you to understand about Jesus. I know a fellow there in Reynosa, Mexico. I took him to a church one time. And there was a message of salvation given. And that young man heard that message and boom, he was convicted. And he wanted to become a Christian that very night. And you can probably guess what happened. He didn't become a Christian. And as time went on forward, he chose not to hear that anymore in his life. And his life now is in another direction. I can't tell you how many times in Reynosa that I sat there in my English classes I had in my home, besides the ones in the churches, that the students would just begin to cry when I'd share about Jesus Christ as a missionary and they would ask me about Thailand and I would tell them stories and they would just break down and cry. And it wasn't because it was a sad story, but you recognize the power of God was moving on their life because God's knocked on their door many times in their lives. These are Mexicanos. And yet they close the door. They won't open. They'll fall back on the superstitious Catholic beliefs. And I can say that because I, I was raised a Roman Catholic. And it's incorrect. It's a man-made traditional thing that can do nothing for you. Nothing. It cannot draw you closer to God. You can go through all the rituals, but it can do nothing in the bottom. At the end of the line, it's nothing. Equally, you can go to a Baptist church, you can go to a Pentecostal church, and you can do everything they say. And it's all useless if God's grace isn't drawing you to begin with. If you think you can do it on your own strength, you think you can become a Christian, that you want to turn your life around because you know it's the right thing to do, you're not saved. Grace, this God's love will give you an attitude of love for the Savior who endured all that He had to endure. So that we can call him our Father, Abba. You can't understand that apart from grace. And that love you have for Jesus, when you've been Holy Spirit, spiritually born again by the Holy Spirit, when that actually does really exactly happen, you will share Jesus to the world. If you call yourself a Christian today and you don't do nothing for Jesus, I mean talk to people a way of salvation. Not giving some old clothes you got or canned goods or building somebody a house or paying off somebody to go do it for you. I'm talking about you sharing your born again experience. The reason many Christians aren't on the mission field is because they never had a real experience with Christ in their own life. It's not real. Only God's grace can do that. It brings you into the entrance to the cross. Understanding the cross of suffering that Christ did for us for only one reason. To liberate us. To liberate us. Not to once again be in bondage to traditions of religions 
in the Protestant way or the Catholic way or the Buddhist way or the Hindu way or the Hmong animist way. All of it is meaningless. Not, it's nothing. Only one thing is correct. And that's loving Jesus according to the Protestant Bible New Testament writings of Christ the Apostle and Evangelist. If you don't agree with that, you're not saved. You're not a Christian. You don't have a choice to think, well, I have a right to believe anything I want. No. You don't have a right. You're a slave to Christ, the New Testament says. And you can only be a slave if you've been born again by the Holy Spirit of God. If you want to lead your own life and do your own thing the way you think it's right in your own eyes, you're not saved. God's got a beautiful, glorious plan that He works for everybody. God's not in this phony Baptist uh goofy doctrinal teachings that once saved always saved the elect all that rubbish Jesus died for everyone white black yellow young old everyone on this planet he's God he can do it get your minds off of these traditional things and put your eyes on Jesus he will set you free. He will liberate you. And you will see your destined purpose open right before your eyes. But it's by you. It's by you entering into that relationship with Christ by grace, by the Father opening up your eyes and letting you see the straight and narrow way. And if you are born again truly, You'll run down that narrow way for Jesus. If you're slitting and sliding and can't get going and want to do this and uh, then finding this and can't do that and can't do this, maybe later, maybe next year, maybe I'll go on a mission trip. Some I'll do. I'll, no, that's you in your own strength. I could keep on going. But 40 years as a missionary, I can tell you, most people are not spiritually born again. They're religionists. No matter how good sounding, a lot of the books you're reading, you can buy in a Christian bookstore, have been pumped up and, and written in such a way to make them out like they're powerful means of God. But let me tell you something. When you actually find out the truth of what they actually believe and have written, you will find that their writings are contrary to Christ, the apostle and evangelist. And it just blows away everything. That's what happens when people are converted when they leave the Catholic Church and become born-again Christians, they can't believe how they've been deceived. And it's the same thing with Pentecostal people that's been in the Pentecostal Church all their life, and they think because they spoke in tongues once in a while that they're saved. They have, they have never lived for Christ. They experienced the gift of God for a, for a, a short period and they thought, that's it, now I'm in. No. Repentance is turning your life, turning to the teachings of Christ, the evangelists and the apostles, and practicing those every day. You cannot become a Christian and then say, well, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to keep doing my 9 to 5 job. And I'm not going to do anything else. I mean, oh, I'm going to go to church. Oh, I'm going to pay these guys 10%, this tithing, legalistic law. I'm going to pay them 10%. But of course, I'm going to get it all back at the end of the year. 
What a... It's a joke. This tithing thing's a joke. In the New Testament, you can read about Ananias and Sapphira, how they held back part of their money. The New Testament teaches plainly that the people gave everything, and God requires everything of you to become a Christian. Jesus told that little rich guy, hey, give it all away, come follow me. He couldn't do it. I can't tell you how many times I've said that to people. Come, help me on the mission field. Come, go in Reynosa, Mexico. People wouldn't go with me to go to the, even go to the jail. In Thailand, people wouldn't even, other missionaries, 62 other mission groups I contacted go with me to go up into the mountains to the Burmese refugee camps to share Jesus. They didn't want to go. And they didn't go. Being a Christian is real. It's not some, some idea or something. Jesus will change your life. Jesus, nobody else. And you have to get on your knees. You have to yield to Him and Him alone. Not to some man, not to some priest or pastor, or whoever. You get saved, it's going to be between you and Jesus. i got to get off here. This is Missionary Norman. Keep the faith. And I'm going to be doing some more YouTubing. Amen? Amen.